There are strange things out there that seem to have no explanation. Sometimes they are conjured up by the darkest corners of our subconscious. But on occasion, they dwell beyond the confines of our imagination. They may come from another realm, or out of the sky, or from beyond the grave. Once they set foot into our world, the line between dreams and reality becomes unclear. It's our job to investigate these reports and compile the Virginia Paranormal Case Files. When we first moved in, we saw little black blobs going across the room in the corner. He would see them in at the front, at the bedroom door. They are a little bit taller and thinner. And then after that, a little girl appeared beside my bed. Long blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail with a little blue dress on. And she just stood there, you know, hands folded. Um, I've heard a baby cry. I've heard a woman yell at the kids to tell them to shut up. He got smacked on his back when nobody was here but him taking a nap. Something smacked him on the back really hard. He got poked in the eyeball one night. Um, not me. I didn't do it. And then um, someone's kicked her door. We don't know what that is. And then I start looking at the security camera and we've got little white clouds going on the front porch. So... Oh, and he heard someone call Paw Paw the other day, and it was just me and him here. It was me and my kids at home. Uh, I was getting them ready for bed, and I got like halfway up the steps, and someone was knocking on the door. When I went to the door, nobody was there. And then I went back to go up the steps, and I heard the knock again. I actually opened it. No one was there. And then as I was walking away, someone started knocking on the door again, and I opened it immediately, and again, nobody was there. I was in the kitchen getting my kids breakfast ready and my mom was upstairs with my two-year-old getting him ready for the day and I heard like someone whisper in my ear like help and I ignored it and then I guess because I ignored it it was more of a loud like help get here now so I ran upstairs to my mom who was playing with my child so it definitely was not her um, and then also regarding my two-year-old every night it seems mostly like every night at four o'clock I hear him in his room yelling stop no and it's literally every night around the same time around three or four in the morning um what room did the help sound like it was coming from it sounded like i was in the kitchen and it just sounded like it definitely sounded like it was coming from upstairs because it sounded like it was her and that's why i ignored it but then like the second time i mean <laughs> but the second time it was the way it came across it was more like no like legit help and when i ran upstairs she was fine and I was like asked her, why did you yell for help she's like I did not I was like yes you did and it was very clear she did not yell for help did you hear anybody yell for help I didn't oh. yeah and then Jackson her five-year-old was upstairs in the bedroom yeah he was watching YouTube's and well YouTube and he came downstairs and long story short he said that the TV went off and went to a different channel and he wasn't even touch the controls and it's a brand new TV, so it's not like it was static or nothing. But he got very upset, and he said he saw a ghost, like, go by him or around him or something, and it scared him. Downstairs, I've heard people, just, I've heard people more likely talking in my ear. Really? And it's, sometimes I can't understand it, and sometimes I can with, like, help or stuff like that, so. Well, I went inside, and I interviewed the client and learned about the activity. What we're going to do now is we're going to have Linda and Will go through and do the baseline readings. And in doing the baseline readings, they're not biased at all by this location. They don't know any of the activity that's been reported here or any of the paranormal hotspots throughout the house. So I'm also interested to debrief them afterwards and see if they got any kind of feelings in any certain area of the house or any certain rooms, anything unusual that they picked up on.
This whole time it's been at about a point two, point three. It's the highest I've seen it. Is there um, a panel box or something? In? It, I believe it's in the laundry room to the left here. It could be. See if it gets greater as you go into this room. It's in this room. Does it go up as you go into there? Yeah, I think it's coming from in there. So I'd have to say there were two places in the house that felt a little bit strange, a little bit different than the main floor, the main living area. And those places were uh, the downstairs, it's a split level, so it's one of those where you have the main landing um, floor and then you have a downstairs area. Uh, which looked like kind of a man cave of sorts. Um, that was not, too, it didn't feel bad. None of it felt really bad in particular, but the downstairs didn't have as strong of a feeling as the actual upstairs did. Um, you go up that flight of steps to the main floor there, and as soon as I got up to the top of those steps, I could feel that sort of heavy feeling. Um, in particular, when I walked um, to the left, you go into a small bedroom that was obviously a child's bedroom. He was sitting in there playing um, on his video games or something. Um, that room in particular felt really kind of unsettling. Um, the, then, of course, when you go up the other flight of steps to the second, I guess it would be the third floor, um, it, that feeling kind of dissipated a little bit. So I'm thinking that maybe it might be concentrated in uh, this that particular side of the house in that left hand side of the house Particularly the second floor, but also maybe the the ground floor below it So just like what Linda said uh, For me it felt more like the man cave had some activity down there um, What she said not anything negative not anything that it would be harmful But I felt like there was some sort of presence down there in the man cave uh, now the second floor I felt that there was something up there, uh, particularly for me, the opposite, I actually thought it was more up top near where the closets were, where the storage area was. But for me, just kind of walking around the house, it seems to me a case of maybe the children seeing something, maybe uh, the, the kids having some sort of interaction, maybe it was a grandparent or something like that. I saw a few photos of a, a, a grandparent. Maybe the grandparent is checking in on the kids and they're maybe seeing grandpa or something like that. Uh, that's the kind of vibe that I got from it, but nothing negative. I didn't feel anything heavy like you do in a place that has a negative spirit. Um, again, I'm not a psychic, but that's just how I felt going into it. As far as the readings go, uh, the carbon monoxide alarm did not go off at all, which if uh, it had gone off, that would indicate to us that there is carbon monoxide present, therefore it's possible they could hallucinate and see things. Um, so that's a good sign that that did not go off. For the tri-field meter, which we're reading the electromagnetic field, um, typically in a normal spot in the house, it was anywhere from 0.2 to 0.4, which that's hardly anything. Um, and it of course went up in the areas that you expect it to, whether it's an outlet, a fridge, a TV. Um, so no um, abnormal spikes in the house either. Based on the reports from the interview with the client and talking to her over the phone, uh, some of the things that Will and Linda said were both interesting. It seems like a lot of the activity is coming from upstairs, talking about someone up there yelling for help. She saw a man a silhouette of a man wearing what she described as an Amish style hat standing in her doorway. She saw the spirit of a little girl. You mentioned something to do with the kids perhaps. Uh, she did mention a spirit of a little girl that she saw with blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail wearing a blue dress. She also, as far as the children, he was in playing or watching videos on YouTube and he saw a ghost. What he he was only he's a little kid. He described. He said he saw a ghost come in. The channel started changing on the TV, and he ran out of there. 
So there's definitely something with the upstairs uh, where a lot of the activity seems focused. Now there's also something with the porch. They've caught some interesting things on their cameras which we have yet to review and see what it is. But also there's been knocking on the door. Uh, the daughter heard it as well. Someone was banging on the door. She comes to answer it. There's nobody there. Goes upstairs. Here's the knocking again. Nobody's there. So the activity does seem to be focused in the upstairs area, this side of the house where you were kind of picking it up. We're standing in what we believe is the master bedroom. We say we believe that because there's like 50 rooms in this house and it's hard to tell, but um, we think we're in the master bedroom and um, we're gonna run an EVP session here. And we also have the REM pod going at the same time. Um, interesting enough, uh, the man who owns the home just told us that he was sleeping downstairs in the man cave um, and something smacked him across the face at three o'clock in the afternoon. He wakes up and he's the only one in the house. So um, we're definitely going to have to venture down there at some point as well. All right, I'm Jeff. Linda. And I'm Will. And we don't mean to impose by any means. Uh, we're not trying to be here unwanted. We'd just like to know if, aside from the three of us, if there's anybody else in this room, we're, we're here to give you the means to communicate. If you can, I have this little device on the bed here that has a red light on it. And if you come near that red light, that may light up and let us know that you're here. If you can understand me, can you come near that device, please? Can you try to tell us who smacked? the man who was sleeping downstairs. About two years ago, there was a remodel in the bathroom. All of a sudden, they started to see some things happen around the house. Were you upset that they changed a few things in the bathroom? What's the name of the little girl that's been seen in the house here? What is the name of the person that sleeps in this bedroom? Who is the man that was seen wearing a hat that was described as an Amish style hat? I am kind of interested in the portal theory though. I mean it seems like a variety of different spirits, um, none of which sound like they really belong here, at least not in this era. Um, so I'm wondering if this could be perhaps some portal has been opened maybe probably by mistake or they didn't realize what they were doing and perhaps these various entities are sort of coming through and visiting the house. One thing I find interesting though is the children because it does sound like this guy with the hat, Amish style hat, that's a common report when people see shadow figures, the guy with the hat. Right. But I'm almost wondering if something happened with children here in this house because of the little girl that appeared because and I'm not sure if she mentioned during the interview but uh, she mentioned on the phone that she would hear crying in the night a, a kid crying and someone yelling shut up so uh, maybe someone was mean to children that lived here previously uh, and that yeah. residual energy just kind of lingered behind or depending on how long ago it was that they passed their spirits are still here or it could be that the man that's seen with a hat was a farmer and perhaps he owned this land way back before any of this was here. Perhaps he was mean to children. He could have been. You know, it could have been that this little girl that they see was related to him in some way. Yeah. It could have been his voice that they hear yelling, shut up, you know, when the baby's crying. Like, maybe he was a mean person and his energy is still here. It could be. And the guy sleeping downstairs on the couch, something slapped him. 
You know what I mean? Was that something to get his attention? Or was it something being mean? It's almost like he was sleeping at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and maybe this mean guy came up and like, hey, slapped him in, in the face, like, wake up, why are you sleeping at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Maybe. You know? Maybe. One thing uh, I think we'll have to do, of course, is we got to do the spare box here pretty soon. Yeah. See if we have any responses to that. But one thing's for certain, I guess, is if this is the spirit of a farmer that lived here that she's seen and not just the typical uh, shadow figure that's been seen throughout locations, he would most likely be intelligent because mm -hmm. this would have been farmland at the time. So there's no reason that he would appear standing in that doorway unless he's conscious that this house is here. Right. See? Right. Because typically when there's a, a, a house that's built and there's spirits that haunt that land, you'll see them walk right walk through the house through the like house. it's not even there when they're residual. That's right. You know, it takes an intelligent spirit to come up here in the room. Yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and sit on the couch in the general area where uh, the client where the client said that um, it's so steady going off. It usually takes a while for it to adjust. If it goes off again after that, that's when we start really paying attention to it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and lay down on the couch in the general area where the client said that they were slapped about two three o'clock in the afternoon one day with no one else there and what we're gonna do is see if we can encourage something to slap him slap well you know does he gotta lay down was like how were you laying lay down laying down okay there was another camp said that was longer so. Uh, <laughs> the only way to get that was cut it. Oh, really? Jeez. Oh, yeah. Just burn bait the whole house. <laughs> We're still cleaning up from it. Mm. All right, so we got the uh, voice recorder going. All right, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. And I'm Will. And uh, if there's anybody here with us, we have this little device on the floor. It's got a red light on it. If you come near that, it can light up. You can use that to communicate with us, to let us know that you're here. Uh, another option is to try to talk to us. Linda's recording. So if you talk, we may pick up your voice and be able to hear what you're saying. Could you try telling us your name? We've heard that someone slapped a gentleman who was sleeping on the sofa here at one time. Can you tell us who that was? We have Will sleeping on the sofa now. Can you go slap him? Did you used to live on this land? not want us to be here? If you have anything to say, now is the time to do it. Can you come near the red light? It's not going to hurt you. Can you tell us if there's a portal in this house? Right before we wrapped up downstairs, we were kind of using Will as bait, paranormal bait if you will. We had him lay on the couch to see if anything would be uh, invoked to slap him. 
which it didn't seem to happen. But the gentleman he had mentioned that he was sitting downstairs and the other day he heard his grandson come in. He heard him come in the front door and yell, Papa, Papa. And he goes up, he said, I'm gonna go up and scare him. I'm gonna sneak up on him. So he goes up the stairs, said, there was nobody there. His grandson wasn't there. He asked his wife, hey, I thought he came in. She said, no, I didn't hear anything. So whatever's here, it seems like it's imitating voices because the daughter heard the mother yelling help upstairs. He hears his grandson come in the door. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like they're hearing other people's voices who live in the house or frequently come into the house. Mm. So the client was saying how he heard the kid's voice and uh, it, the kid wasn't there. So it kind of reminded me of the house that I grew up in. At my house, there's been a few instances where we've heard someone's voice mimicked. Uh, one time I went into my brother's room when he was not there and I heard his voice say, Will. And then another time, my mom who was upstairs, I was downstairs, she heard my voice from my bedroom and she called out, hey Will, I need da da da. And I call up, what? And uh, she screamed because she thought I was in the other room. So growing up in a house, I have heard maybe a spirit or some other energy be able to mimic someone's voice. Like you had mentioned once before that that actually brings up the question of whether it's the energy or a spirit that's left behind. But what I find interesting is that like the house that I grew up in, we moved into about two weeks after I was born. And I lived there until I was 18 years old. Um, and my parents still live there to this day. And never once have we ever heard any, any, anybody calling out in the house when no one was there. So it makes you wonder if, if that actually happens and it is energy as opposed to being a spirit, then it must have something to do with people's energy, the, peop the energy of the people that live in the house as opposed to just you know the average person's energy. It must be something different about that. Right, why do some people's houses, if it is the energy, why do some people's houses seem to retain that energy and right. others don't? exactly. Interesting question. Like what Linda was saying, it brings me back to a, one of the first things I ever heard Jeff say when I interviewed you a, a while ago. You said how soldiers could theoretically be able to go back to the battlefield that they were just at, a Civil War soldier for instance, and be able to see themselves in that battle. Even though them the, themselves are still alive, it's not necessarily a ghost in them, it's the energy, it's the emotion that, that was residual on the haunting. Yeah. That residual haunting. So maybe this is the same thing with the house you know it's that energy of the normal everyday life that kind of gets left behind even though you're still alive so it's it's an interesting theory to think that maybe in order for there to be a ghost it doesn't mean that person has to be dead it could just be the energy that they've left behind absolutely so i'm sitting upstairs in the bedroom in the master bedroom and i'm doing a solo evp session up here I have the digital voice recorder next to me on the bed and back here behind me, you can sort of see the light there, I have the REM pod. So I'm going to start asking some questions and see if perhaps if there's only one person here that we can get it to respond. It's relatively quiet in the house. Um, I don't initially hear any sort of TV or anything, any noise except for an occasional cough. So my name is Linda. I'm here to talk to you. I want to find out who you are and why you're here. If there's someone in the room with me, can you try to touch the red light that's on the bed? That device is called a REM pod. If you come near it, It'll make a noise and then the light will change colors. The people in the house have seen a shadow figure. Can you tell me who that is? Perhaps you know who the little girl is that's been seen in the house. The little girl with the blue dress.
The room definitely has a little bit of a different vibe when you're in here by yourself, but I wouldn't say that the vibe is particularly unsettling or scary in any way. It's, um, it's actually kind of cold and quiet in here, and I think if I laid down on the bed, I could probably fall asleep in here easily. I really want to see if you can touch that light back behind me. Can you try to touch that? It's not going to hurt you in any way. It's just a way for us to know that you're here. Did you used to live on this land? Or perhaps you lived nearby? I have this little device next to me on the bed here. This is a digital voice recorder. It can record your voice so that we can hear it. Can you try to speak into that? Try telling us your name. Why are you here? Do you come here to play with the kids in the house? Is there someone who's mean to you? We had Linda go in and do a solo EVP session upstairs with the REM pod. We're going to split up at this point. What we're going to do is Linda and I, we're going to go downstairs and run the spirit box. And Will's going to go upstairs and do an EVP session. We're going to do these simultaneously to see if either of us upstairs or downstairs get any results. Hey, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. And uh, we were down here a little bit before. We brought this device. And we're wondering if you can use it to communicate with us. Could you... Could you try telling us your name? Just to know that it did sound like it said yes. Like. Like. What is your name? Here. Were you here before this house was built? Yes. Yeah. What's the name of the baby that's been crying at night? Baby to shut up. It's, it's something. It's sound like I said, it's Linda. Is there something you want or need? So right now I am in the bedroom of the client and on the bed is the REM pod. On the dresser over there is my voice recorder and I'm trying to communicate with any of the spirits that are in this house and especially the man in black, the one that's been seen in the corner of the room in the, in the doorway. So let's go ahead and see if we can be able to get a reaction from the REM pod. 
my name is Will. And the reason why I'm here is because I want to talk to you. I know that you want to tell the family something. Now is the time for you to speak. Whatever you say, I can be able to tell them. So the first thing I want to do is right in front of me, I call it a REM pod. It has this red light, and if you come over to it and touch it, it'll light up. It'll turn green. So can you come over to that REM pod for me? Touch it and make it turn green. If you don't want to touch the, the light, on the dresser over here is my voice recorder. If you go over to it and talk into it, I can be able to hear you. So if you could, can you please go over to it and tell me your name? How long have you lived here? There's a dog barking outside. Am I speaking with a man? Am I speaking with a girl? If there is a child in this room right now, can you come over to this red light and touch it for me? If you're the man in the black hat, can you go to the doorway for me? I want to see you. If you're man enough to show yourself to a woman, show yourself to me. If you don't show up, then I guess you're scared. I heard you like to hit people. I dare you to hit me. I want you to hit me right now. If you want to hit these people, hit me. Go ahead. Not going to hit me, are you? Okay, so if you don't want to hit me, maybe you're not here. And you don't want to touch the light, you don't want to turn that green. What can you do then? So I feel like there is something in the room, but it's not interacting with the REM pod. It's not hitting me in the face like I asked it to. It feels like there is another presence in the room.
but it's not interacting. It's kind of just watching off in the distance, just seeing what I have to say, and not really interacting. Maybe it said something on the voice recorder. We'll have to find out. Were you here during the first battle of Deep Bottom or Darby Town? Yeah. did. Were you here during the Battle of Meadow Bridge? Were you here during the Second Battle of Deep Bottom? Battle of Oak Grove. Were you here during the Battle of Darby Town and New Market Road? the Battle of Garnets and Golding's Farm. At first glance, it didn't, there were some possible responses that came through the spirit box. I mean, there was a lot of radio chatter that came through and stuff. We've got to go back through it to see if any of that was responses to our questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Will did the solo EVP session upstairs here in the bedroom. Still, no action from the REM pod tonight. Now, this is interesting because we've talked about this before. We've said, you know, this thing could it have be, you know, some sort of fix in some sort of way where it just goes off just to kind of get people to buy these things, to buy into it. You know, like, oh, hey, the REM pod always gives us results. Go out and buy one. There's locations like this where we go through the entire place and that thing does not go off not once. once. Yeah. And then there's other places where it's going off like crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's so right. it kind of adds the credibility of it, I think, a little bit. Yeah. I wonder what scientifically could set it off depending on the location. It's not EMF fields or anything mm -hmm. like that. No. We always do base sweeps, and it's right. usually about the same in every house that we go into. Mm -hmm. But some houses more than others, it tends to go off. Another thing is moisture. The humidity seems to be the same at every house we go to. Yeah. Right. So it's not that either. Then what yeah. could it be? Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to activate that again. We're going to try the spirit box up here in the master bedroom. See if we get any responses. Okay, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. And I'm Will. And I'm sure you've seen us about the house by now, downstairs, upstairs. And... We're here just trying to find out who you are. We don't mean you any harm. The family, they have not said, hey, can you come in here and get rid of whatever's here or whoever's here? They just want us to try to find out what your message is, why you're here, and if there's anything we can do to help you. Whether it's pass on that message or help you find your way through this house to wherever you're going to. Could you please try using that device to tell us your name? Why did the old man and the, and the young girl seem to appear here? Is there something about this bedroom that makes it easy for you to come through here? I kept the red pot on the bed. I'm curious if um, that man is seen in the doorway. If they don't necessarily come to the bed, they use this as a way to walk. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's put it in the doorway. We were downstairs and we asked some questions about the Civil War, the war between the states, because we know there were a lot of battles that were fought in this area. We know that the war 
really took its toll on the countryside here in Henrico. Were you involved in this war between 1861 and 1865? Did this war have any impact on your life? The man that's been seen standing in the doorway here with the hat. If he's here, we'd like him to talk to us. If he's not here, is there anybody here that has seen this man and can tell us anything about him? Was he a farmer or a soldier? If you don't know anything about the man in black, who is the little girl that has been seen here? If you are the little girl, where are your parents? Was it your mother that was yelling for help? If so, what was happening to her? Why did she need help? We wrapped up the spirit box session upstairs in the bedroom. Some possible responses that came through, we're gonna to have to go back and review that. But what we're gonna do is, Will's gonna check out video from his solo EVP session, just to see uh, a possible anomaly that might have been on there. While we're doing that, we have the REM pod sitting up on the front porch, which is another hot spot here at the house. And we're gonna be monitoring that from our makeshift base station out here in the driveway and seeing if there's any activity with the REM pod. So we're set up for an EVP session here on the front porch. I'm Jeff. And I'm Will. And we'd like to know if there's anybody else here with us. We have this little device down here on the, on the floor and if you come near that device, it will light up. It will let us know that you're here. Can you use that to communicate with us? If you're scared to touch that device, what I have right here, if you talk into it, we can be able to hear you. The reason why we're here is we want to give you the opportunity to be able to speak to the people that live here. We can be able to relay that message to them. Can you try telling us your name? We got a generator going on in the distance. Why do you knock on the front door? Is there someone in this house that you're trying to reach, that you're trying to give a message to? Did you used to live here? Maybe not in this house, sure, but in the land that's here. If you want us to leave, can you come near that red light? Welcome to the evidence room. This case, it was definitely an interesting case. I have to say that the spirit that seemed to be haunting this location, one of the spirits anyway, 
seemed to be reminiscent of Mo from the Three Stooges. I mean, this guy was slapping people while they were sleeping. Uh, he was poking them in the eyes. So it was kind of weird as to what this ghost wanted. Was it just, hey, he was not happy with somebody sleeping on that couch in that area? Or like I mentioned in the video, was it perhaps, hey, I need you to get up, I need you to help because they've heard somebody yelling help throughout the house and perhaps this spirit was trying to wake that person up to get them to help. Uh, we don't know. But Linda reviewed the audio. We went through all the pictures uh, from the investigation. And unfortunately, we don't have any evidence. Now, that doesn't mean that the location isn't haunted. It doesn't mean that these reports aren't true. There's a lot of times where we go into a place, and I say it all the time, the client is very credible, a very credible witness. Sometimes there's several witnesses, but the activity just doesn't happen while we're there. Now, in this case, it wasn't that they were bothered by the activity. It wasn't one of these cases where it seems like something very dark that they wanted it gone. They were just curious. They had these anomalies on the camera and they had these strange sounds and these voices throughout the night and these apparitions that were appearing throughout their house and they wanted to know why they were there. Uh, unfortunately, not turning up any evidence, the best thing to do is schedule a return investigation, go back and see if the results are the same or perhaps it just was a night that it wasn't active and on a return investigation we may be able to pick up more evidence. But I want to thank you for watching uh, this edition of Virginia Paranormal Case Files. Until next time, I'm Jeff, and remember, there's much more to see in the dark.